Hey my dudes, my name is Cecilia and welcome to my 30th birthday party here in Stockholm, Sweden. This week's video is a bit different as I wanted to show you both how I made my birthday cake and a little bit of a vlog about the party. Let's talk about the cake first. This year I made a brown butter carrot cake with a vanilla lime curd and cream cheese frosting. To make the cake I started by putting 350 grams of butter in a small pot. Onto the stove it went on fairly high heat. I'm impatient and I like to cook my brown butter on high while whisking continuously just because I think it goes faster. Just as the butter particles started to brown, I turned the stove off and continue whisking. I know that the residual heat in the pan will brown the butter to that nice, deep, dark, golden brown that I like without burning it. I put that to the side to cool down while I worked on the rest of the batter. The carrots were peeled and then topped and tailed. I grated these on my trusty box grater. I used both the big holes and the small holes. I did about 50-50 bigger hole and smaller hole just because I like to have both textures in my cake. You could do both, only chunky or only small if you wished. I really like fresh ginger in my carrot cake. You could use, of course, dried powdered ginger, but I like the zing that fresh ginger gives you. So I peeled my little nubbin of ginger and grated it on a microplane. I set that to the side and it was time for dry ingredients. 360 grams of flour get sifted together with 8 grams of baking powder, 4 grams of baking soda, 4 grams of salt, 2 grams of cloves, and 4 grams of cinnamon. Whisk that together just to distribute the leaveners and the spices, and then set that to the side as well. Into yet another bowl, I cracked 3 eggs and poured in 75 grams of buttermilk. Whisked those together and then added in 400 grams of sugar, a touch of vanilla extract got added in there as well for layers of flavor, and then I slowly poured in the cooled brown butter. The butter still needs to be liquid, but no longer hot, hot. Warm is okay. Make sure you really scrape out all the brown butter solids that settle on the bottom of the pan. This is where all the flavor is. Whisked that together really, really well, and then added it to all of my dries all in one go. Just dumped it in there and began to stir. I think it's easier to stir the wets and dries together without the carrots so you can really see that there's no lumps in the batter. Threw in the carrots and began folding them in. The batter got really, really thick because the carrots were still a little bit cold from the fridge and so the butter, of course, thickened up. You could replace the brown butter straight one to one with oil and then you would have like a looser cake batter. But I think the brown butter is more delicious, so that's what I would recommend. I love baking my cakes in a springform pan just because they make my life so easy. This is a nine inch nonstick springform. I still like to have a circle of parchment at the bottom and brush the bottom and the sides with oil just because I am not messing around here, you guys. I did not want this cake to stick. I only have one pan of this size, so I added half of the batter and made it nice and flat and even. You can see how thick the batter is. I popped it into a 350 degree Fahrenheit oven and baked it for half an hour. I always do a toothpick test. This one came out beautifully, and because it's baked on a low temperature, it gets really nice and flat on top so you don't have to cut off the dome. Look how beautiful they are. I made these several days ahead of the party and froze them, so I made sure to really, really wrap them well in plastic before putting them in the freezer, and also made sure that when in the freezer that they were sitting flat and that nothing was squishing on top of them. A day or two before the party, I got started on my lime curd. I wanted to make sure that it had time to set properly. I zested three limes and then juiced them. Scraped my vanilla bean. And then into a small pot added two eggs, 85 grams of sugar, 90 grams of lime juice, all of the zest, and all of the vanilla bean. Mix that together really, really well and immediately put on the stove. You don't want the eggs, sugar, and citrus to hang out together for too long without cooking or they will kind of like cook themselves and your curd can be weird. On medium-high whisking continuously, I brought the curd up to 82 degrees Celsius. As soon as it hit 82, I took it off the stove and poured it through a fine mesh strainer. This is a really important step so that you have a nice smooth curd. I gave my curd a good whisk to release some of the heat and then started adding the butter tablespoon by tablespoon. Once it was all in, I cleaned up my edges and pressed a layer of plastic wrap on contact and popped the whole thing into the fridge. On party day, I got started with my cream cheese frosting. 500 grams of room temp butter went into the mixing bowl first and whipped up using the paddle attachment until light and fluffy, about two or three minutes. I scraped down the sides and then added in 600 grams of room temp Philadelphia. I'm sure you could use another cream cheese, but I love Philly. 
whipped that another two or three minutes with the paddle attachment and then there was so much in this bowl I started adding the powdered sugar spoonful by spoonful. Now I'm not gonna lie to you guys or hide my mistakes from you. This frosting was a journey. I added vanilla extract and some salt and realized that my frosting was not coming together and I started to freak out a little bit. I switched to the whisk attachment and tried to whisk it together for another like 15-20 minutes and it just broke even more. I popped the whole thing into the fridge for about half an hour and then tried mixing it up with my paddle attachment again. It didn't really help, so I thought maybe there's too much fat or it's too cold. Let me add some boiling water a tablespoon at a time. At first I thought it was working, but that was a lie. <laughs> I switched back to the whisk attachment, but that still wasn't helping. So I threw half of the frosting in another bowl and into the fridge while I worked on just half of the frosting at a time. I tried a little bit more water, but that still wasn't helping. So then I thought maybe actually there isn't enough fat and it's actually too warm. So I started to add cold butter bit by bit. This actually did help and my frosting did actually come together. There was not enough fat in it. I was following a recipe from the Martha Stewart Baking Handbook, which is usually super reliable. I will put that recipe as she has written it in the description below, but warning, I had to use a lot of my pastry chef knowledge and a lot of experimentation to get this frosting to come together and the whole process took me over two hours, which uh, was very stressful for me. If you guys have a rock solid cream cheese frosting recipe, please let me know down below in the comments so I can use it for my birthday cake next year. Once I was happy with the frosting, I threw it into a bowl and into the freezer. I don't know why I threw it into the freezer, but I did. And then I took out the other half that had been in the fridge and started to add the cold butter bit by bit again. And that worked really nicely. The frosting emulsified and I was happy. I took my cake layers directly from the freezer just because I knew the cake was going to be sitting out all day and I felt like it would be easier to decorate a frozen cake. I piped a nice thick line of frosting around the edge and then added, I would say, 90% of my curd onto the cake. The second layer got stacked on top and then I crumb coated the whole thing in a light layer of frosting. Back into the fridge it went for about an hour. When it was time to decorate the cake, the frosting had gotten so cold in the freezer that I had to heat it up a little bit while I was mixing. I used my trusty hairdryer to do this, but look how beautifully it emulsified. It turned out to be a gorgeous frosting in the end. I added a nice thick layer of frosting all around the cake and did my best to smooth it out. I make an American style cake only about once or twice a year. And while I am a pastry chef and a baker, cake decorating is not something I have ever done for work or anything I've ever trained with. So this was definitely me just winging it based on techniques that I've seen on YouTube and Instagram. I tried my best with this cute little border on the bottom and a swirly kind of thing on top. This was a lot harder for me than I thought it was going to be. The party theme was springtime and like florals, so I dyed some frosting, yellow and pink, and then I got these fun flower piping tips at Michael's when I was in the United States. And these are so great because you don't really need much technique, you just kind of go with the piping bag and boom, you have a flower. The pink ones were more like tulip shaped, and then I dyed some frosting green for little leaves. Now here again, we ran into trouble. I could not, for the life of me, make these leaves look cute. I thought maybe my frosting was too stiff, so I tried to knock out some air by blending it with my hand blender. That did not work. I tried to heat up the frosting a little bit so it was looser. I melted it, so I had to mix it in with my remaining white frosting to get it to cool down again. It still wasn't working. I finally gave up and switched piping tips and then figured out that I had just been using the wrong piping tip the entire time. The leaves ended up super, super cute and I just put them everywhere. Once I was happy with those, I took some gold powder and just kind of sprinkled it all over the top because everything is better with some glitter. Into the fridge, the cake went until party time. While I'd been decorating my cake, my best friend Grace, who's visiting me from Spain, was helping me put together all of the party decorations. We put a string of lights in my tree, hung up some garland, wiped down the cocktail dispenser, and blew up a bunch of balloons. I worked on some of the hors d'oeuvres I was to serve, including mini Hasselbach patates and mini quiches. My friend Annelie came over and brought us bon mi so we wouldn't be starving before the party. Grace continued to decorate and Annelie helped me out with the food because I was freaking out. We started to set up the table and then Matilda also came over to help out. She was in charge of making the cocktail and Annalie was doing just so many things for me. At this point, I think I was trying to do my hair and makeup so I could actually be ready for the party. Thank God for all of my friends. I would not have been able to do this without them. We put some loirum on top of the fried Hasselbach patates, put them on the table, put on the finishing touches, and we were ready to party. This is what the full hors d'oeuvre table looked like. 
we had red pepper and Vestibalt and Gouchers, Prestost coins with chive mayo, spinach and green pea mini quiches, Sunchoke blinis with creme fraiche and Stanbets rum, crudités with hummus, Hasselback patates with loyerum, endive with parsley goat cheese, grapes, and walnuts, and crustades with scoggin. And my finished cake out of the fridge. My friends came over around 7 o'clock. We were hanging out, talking, and then everyone took a bunch of food, drinks, and cocktails. We hung out until it was time for cake. And after cake, we had hot shots because it's not a Sicilia party without hot shots. Hot shots are vanilla galliano with freshly brewed coffee and lightly whipped cream on top. Then there's a song that goes with it. They are so delicious. After the hot shots, we all left. Yeah. To leave, is that what it's yes. <laughs> Piled into cabs and went to this club in Stockholm called Stir Compania. We had a great time dancing the night away and got home at about 6 a.m. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you like this week's episode, then please like and subscribe, and I hope to see you around next week. Hey,